Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is Conversations with the Soul, and I'm Rita Hickman. I'm here in Northern Illinois. If you've been watching our videos, you generally get a, uh, a good view of uh, what I get to look at on a regular basis. Good morning, Kelly Brown. So as you can see, it snowed. Good morning, Kathy. As you can see, it, it snowed here. Um, anybody in the area knows that big, beautiful, fluffy white flakes, and uh, it's covered my backyard. Good morning, Ega Yoga. So it's covered everything. It's now my winter wonderland, which is awesome. Which, uh, you know, when we're coming up to the holidays, it's really easy to forget, um, you know, that after the holidays, we're going to have a tough time, which is why now, good morning, Darcel, which is why now when you're getting ready for everybody else, when you're, um, you know, caught up in the holiday spirit and getting the tree ready and decorating and making cookies and doing all the great traditions. Good morning, George. Um, when you're doing that, now is the time to start adding in things that uh, will make sure that you can survive when January hits and it's cold and gloomy and the pretty snows turn into, you know, ugly gray slush and your back hurts and you're tired and you just can't get warm and um, all you're eating are soups and cookies. And uh, now's the time to start preparing for it. And not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally. So I could very easily go into, well, you know what you need to do. Good morning, Tricia. You know, good morning, Bobby Joe. But the problem with doing that is we all already know what we need to do. You know, if you've been struggling with trying to get through winter for, you know, how old are you now? Probably a couple decades by now. If you've been struggling trying to get through winter, you already know the things you're supposed to be doing. Oh yes, I'm supposed to be exercising. I'm supposed to take my vitamin D. I'm supposed to make sure I stay hydrated. I'm supposed to take my zinc. You know, I need to make sure that, you know, I don't isolate myself in my dark little cave. Um, you know, you already know the things that you're supposed to be doing. That's not the problem. The problem is, is when you start spiraling down, you don't have any of the energy to do those things. Good morning, Shelly. Because you know when you feel good, it's easy to make sure you do um, the healthy habits that keep you in a good space. The problem is, is when you don't feel good, you don't want to do anything. You just kind of want to hide from the world, you know? You want to um, stay in bed underneath the covers or you want to keep yourself so busy. Good morning, Andrea, until you, you know, get sick. And, um, and then you're forced to stay in bed, you're forced to take care of yourself. And in our busy world, um, there isn't gonna be anybody to take care of you. You know, there isn't gonna be somebody just puttering around with nothing better to do, you know, but come in and bring you soup. And if they do, it's great. Um, but they'll only be able to do it once. They aren't gonna be able to wait on you hand and foot. Um, that would be awesome if they could, but not gonna happen. So we have to look at the reasons why we do not um, take care of ourselves and what that actually means. You know, um, the world has changed a lot since you were a kid. I had a great conversation with a, a client earlier this week. And, um, oh good, yeah, motivational videos are a, one of a, a great tool. Thanks for sharing that. So are comedies and um, yeah, I bet. Comedies, anything funny, those are another great tool in your tool bag to keep around. Um, I like Christmas movies and Christmas music. I spent a whole summer uh, when I was depressed listening to Christmas music to try to keep me on balance. So, um, okay, so we were talking about why we don't uh, take care of ourselves and what that really means. Um, so the conversation I was having with my client was about how uh, she would come home she would look at the dishes and the dishes wouldn't be done and her son hadn't done the dishes. And, um, and this feeling of, of disease, discomfort, uh, enough that it just, you know, it took her already tired, exhausted day and, uh, and put it into the garbage. Because, you know, good people have clean houses. You know, good people do their dishes. Good morning, Emma. Uh, good people vacuum their carpets and they pick up and, you know, they don't, they don't look like slobs and they don't look like, you know, hoarders that, uh, you know, they can't move around their house. That's not what good people do. Guess what? Good people do exactly that because 
life has changed where we don't, you know, the, the comparison she gave me was, you know, uh, when she was a kid, of course, her mother always had the dishes done and um, always had everything clean. But her mother also didn't work, oh good, I'm glad you're doing TED Talks. Those are really helpful, Andrea. And good luck with your chemo. You know, the expectations of a, of a family, of a household were uh, much more reachable, let's say, when we were kids. Because now we've got so much more going on. You can't just send your kids outside to play and, uh, and hope for the best and have all this time to do things. So, but part of the problem was the emotion that would come up, that she wasn't a good enough parent, a good enough mother, a good enough, you know, whatever, in order to keep uh, the dishes done. And that would send her over the edge. Here's the really fun little trick, is when you find a way to reframe um, the fact that the dishes aren't being done, then there's less pressure on you you um, spiral down less, you have more energy, and you um, have enough energy to later on get the dishes done. It's a, it's a funny little tipping point. You know, when you push yourself to be somebody, that extra weight and that extra load of who you're supposed to be is just that piece we need to uh, send us down into the the sewer into the dumps. One of the first things you need to do with self-care is take away your judgment. Take away your judgmentalism about who you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, what it's supposed to look like. And I know it's very easy for me to say that. And so I'm going to tell you how to do it. First of all, you give yourself permission or you look for somebody like me. Good morning, Kate to give you permission, and I give you permission. You have permission to not judge yourself by some mythical creature. Mother Teresa was not amazing. I mean, she did amazing things, but she had a lot of struggles she had to go through. Gandhi had a lot of struggles he had to go through. Uh, Martin Luther King, all of these icons, all of these people, um, they were human beings. They didn't have everything perfect either and neither do you and so one of the secrets is is when you take that pressure off of you when you're able to say you know what um i prioritize my family i prioritize my health which means that these other things aren't going to get done you you are someone who is living in a world where you need to juggle so much more than people ever needed to juggle uh 20 30 years ago um there's so many more things going on. If you've got kids, they have to deal with the pressures of bullying and society and the fact that there's nobody you can trust in the community because everybody's a potential you know, threat and family doesn't live close because we have to move places in order to make enough money to support our family. So we have to start looking that, that the expectations we hold ourselves to are unrealistic and that good women, good people, good men, good families do not always get their dishes done. They don't get their laundry done. They don't put things away. They don't have this high level of better homes and gardens uh, expectation thing that's going on. Believe it or not, taking your judgmentalism away is a piece of self-care. And that's one of the biggest blocks to um, to taking care of yourself and getting ready for winter so that you survive uh, than anything else. So start looking at ways you can reframe the things that uh, bring up fears and anxieties and shame and guilt and frustrations. Start looking at that. Start cutting yourself a break. Cut yourself some slack. And you'll find when you do that, it frees up more energy so that you can get them done. You can start to move in that direction. Good morning, Koi. So that's one of the first pieces of success. Look at yourself and say, okay, this shame that I feel, this guilt that I feel, this you know, aggravation is normal. It's no big deal. Every human being goes through this. 
And yeah, it would be great if I could get these things done, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen right now because right now my highest priority is my health. My highest priority is my family, um, is uh, my mental health, my emotional health, my friends, my community, the emotional peace, social justice, whatever it is. Cut yourself a break. Um, stop comparing yourself to the person who lives next door who is probably a little psycho and crazy in the head. And yeah, their house is perfect. Uh, good morning, Mary Jane. But their house may be perfect, their life may look perfect, but they uh, have a lot more going on. And that's the comparison, let's say, uh, as I said, with Mother Teresa and Gandhi and Martin Luther King, that they had a lot more going on than the media showed. Um, we can't base uh, who we are on the sitcoms we watched as a kid. You know, because my family was uh, kind of dysfunctional, <laughs> as at least 50% of American families and the world families were, keep that in mind, at least 50% of us were, we learned what uh, good families were supposed to look like by watching sitcoms, by watching movies, you know, and those are, are created to sell tickets. They're created to keep the economy going, just like the self-help uh, industry is is kept to make you feel like you're just you just can't quite do it you're just not quite enough and that piece that last straw on the camel's back is what tends to suck the life out of you so you can't get anything done you know we tend to look at things as if um, you know it's a pyramid it's this and then this and then this and then this and then this and it's built one upon the other but in reality it's more like a tipping point you know, we reach, we're going along fine, we're somehow keeping all the balls juggled, and then you add one more ball, and they all fall. You can't keep any of them going, because we, we reached a tipping point. So when you can notice when you're starting to stretch a little bit more, when the dishes are making you feel like you're a failure as a human being, that's your cue. That's your cue that, oh, wait, I'm overextending myself. I'm doing a little bit too much. You know what can wait? Not my kid, not my health. The dishes can wait. My mom used to do this great trick. We'd have all of these, we'd have parties. And uh, actually, parties were the only time that we cleaned the house. And uh, it's a habit I've kind of come up with. I, I don't worry about my house too much. Um, when I have a party, when I have guests coming over, that's when I clean. And so what she would do is she would do the dishes and she'd put them in the dish drainer and then she'd put a dish towel over them. She didn't put them away. She just put a dish towel over them. She said, you know what? <laughs> These dishes are going to stay here. I'm going to put a dish towel over them. We're going to hide them a little bit, shove them underneath the bed. It's perfectly fine. The world does not come to an end. You know, the, it, and if people are coming over to judge you for whether you have dishes in the dish drainer, then uh, they're not your friends and you don't want them there. So by taking away a little bit of that pressure on yourself, even when you trigger, even when you feel like the lowest, most uh, horrible human being on the face of the, of the world, um, say, hey, it's perfectly understandable that I feel this way. I get it. I know what I'm feeling. And I'm going to cut myself some slack with that too. It's okay that you feel lousy. You were trained to feel lousy. You were trained to feel like a bad human being if you were not perfect end of story. And uh, it was based on other people who weren't perfect either. So step number one, getting ready for winter, taking care of yourself, cut yourself some slack. This is going to be a hard time. It's going to be dark. You're going to get weight. You're going to feel like a failure. You're not going to, you know, hit your New Year's resolutions. That's okay. Because, you know, in the past, you probably looked at things and you said, you know, if I just had enough willpower, if I just worked harder, if I just did more, um, then I would accomplish things. And if you're not going to do it right, you might as well not do it all. Th that was something that was pounded into my head. If, you, if you're not going to do it right, if you're not going to do a, an amazing job at it, um, then you might as well not bother. And um, so there was that belief that was, that was stuck in my head. But another belief, my dad was a printer. 
And another belief that he put in my head was in printing, you had to have both speed and accuracy. You had to have both. And so you couldn't have it perfect and have it fast, and you couldn't have it um, fast and have it perfect. You had to find a balance that was okay for you. And that's what this is about, finding a balance that's okay for you. You know, because when you do that, when you take that emotional burden off of you, when you take all of that guilt off of you, now you've got the energy freed up. Now you've got the mental health and the emotional energy to start doing more of those things because you're not wasting your time uh, being mad that you're mad, being upset that you feel guilty, feeling uh, frustrated that you did it again. Uh, you're not upset at yourself about that. And that frees up a lot of energy in and of itself. Here's the other main piece, um, which is you really don't know how good self-care will make you feel um, until you start getting these habits into your life. And once you do, you will say to yourself, I can't believe that something as simple as taking vitamin D on a regular basis would help me feel so good. Or you'll say to yourself, I can't believe that spending 15 minutes walking out in nature would really send me, you know, give me the energy. Good morning, Martin. Give me the energy and give me the wherewithal and the things that I needed to feel good. Um, or I really didn't realize how getting a little bit of body work or getting even a little bit of a massage, even if it's a chair massage, even if it's a massage chair, um, even just a little bit would, would help me pull back some of that energy that I needed um, in order to make good choices. So there's this commercial that came out last year and it was about um, a woman who uh, she started her day out with, I don't know, Special K or something like that. And because she made that decision, it was easier to make the next decision and easier to make the, the next decision. Um, but when she started the day out with a muffin, then she might as well have the Danish at 10 and she might as well, you know, do this and that until, you know, if it were my world, then I'd be home having a margarita, you know, at, at four o'clock in the afternoon because my day just kept spiraling down. So even making one small positive choice is something you get to reward yourself for, something you get to give yourself a pat on the back. And um, when you do that, it gives, now it's giving you, now it's giving you energy. So there's two pieces. One, you have to stop sucking energy away from yourself by being so mad at yourself and judging yourself so hard about the fact that you're not getting everything done. Um, take some of the weight off of that side of the scale. And on the positive side of the scale, start doing more things which uh, will make you feel good. And you really, seriously, when you start realizing how much all the things that you're supposed to be doing aren't as hard as you thought they were, um, and you start putting them in your life, it makes a huge difference. I was always chronically dehydrated. I wouldn't drink water uh, hardly at all during the day. And um, then I started to realize, you know what, this is causing a, a lot of problems for me, mainly that I'm constantly tired. I, my body never feels good. Um, I get sick a lot more often. I said, I, I have to start doing something. So I started by putting water next to my bed every night. And at first I had to kind of force myself to drink it. You know, it was like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. Now I will not go without having water next to my bed. So either in the middle of the night or when I wake up in the morning, I have that water to drink. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give that up because it's so critical to me feeling good at the beginning of the day. It gets my digestion going. It, um, you know, it does all of those things. It, it gets my energy going. It gets things moving. You mean all I had to do was put water next to my bed and drink it when I woke up? Are you kidding me? So now the next piece about movement. You know, okay, we all know we're supposed to exercise, and in our minds, we probably have, you know, pictures of a high school gym where, you know, they had a, all right, you need to have your hour of gym, and you need to, 
you know, lift weights and you got to do the mile and you got to do all of this stuff or play tennis or be part of sports. It was great when you were in high school, you know, and you didn't have a million other things that you had to deal with. But that's your level of expectation for yourself. Did you know that you can feel good doing any sort of movement and it doesn't have to be crazy? You don't have to go to the gym and work with a personal trainer in order to, you know, lose four, 40 pounds or 4 pounds or 400 pounds or whatever it may be. You just need to start doing something you enjoy that's movement-based. You need to start doing something in a way that you enjoy. So for me, you know, because I was wired to, to not care about anybody else because nobody cared about me. You know, so I developed this thing of, you know, I'm going to do whatever I want. I go to the gym. I hang out in the steam room. I check out in the sauna so I can dry off. And then I walk around the track listening to music that I love. And then as the walking and as the movement and as the music start to kick in, then I start to dance around the track. And then I have more energy. And then uh, my hips loosen up and my mood loosens up and my mind uh, starts to clear. And, um, and then maybe I'll do a couple weights if I feel like it. People laugh at me because other people go to the gym and, and they've got the perfect outfits and, they've, you know, and they're lifting. Uh, they're, they're doing their cardio and they're doing crazy, amazing things. And what am I doing? I'm this goofy wo woman, you know, dancing around the track, listening to music that I love. And the thing is, is I'm happier. And because I'm happier and I'm more at peace with myself, I'm healthier. So you have these people who are going out and kicking their own butts and working, their, working themselves to death at the gym because they think that's what you're supposed to do at the gym. You're supposed to push yourself over to the edge. Um, and yet they're still sick and tired and unhappy. So it's about finding the things that you like. It's about movement. It's not about fitting into some mold of who you're supposed to be. Because you know what? Nobody cares. Sorry to tell you that. But everyone is so focused on their own world, their own life, their own point of view. Nobody really cares whether you're happy or not. They're more concerned about whether they're happy or not. Nobody cares whether you look perfect or not because they're more concerned about whether they look perfect or not. And so start taking back your power. Start realizing that nobody's going to take care of your health and your happiness except you. And it doesn't have to be some giant, um, you know, overwhelming goal that you set that you suddenly achieve. Um, I'm taking a, a lovely coaching program uh, with Marissa Murgatroyd. And one of the things that she talks about is iterate your way to success. And what she means by that is do something. Good morning, Cynthia. Do something um, and it will move you forward no matter what it is. If it's name your project, product, just come up with a name, any name at all. And then you'll get a better idea and then a better idea and a better idea. So if you feel that you need to achieve or be um, in some magical, amazing place, uh, it's too big of a leap. It's like going from the leap of, I have negative thinking, I have negative thinking, and now I need to have positive thinking. You know what? That's too big of a leap for your brain. We need to go from, um, I'm a loser who can't get anything done, to, um, gee, it would be nice if I didn't think I was a loser that couldn't get anything done, to, well, sometimes in my life, I'm not a loser who doesn't get anything done, to, um, Sometimes I get things done. Uh, actually, I get more things done than I don't get done. To um, maybe I'm not that bad after all. To hey, I've had some pretty good accomplishments in life. To you know what? Uh, things aren't going as badly as I thought they were. To I'm a pretty good human being. There's like 20 steps in there. Whereas in, in the self-help gurus and, and the ads and the things that we watch and all of that, it says, well, just change your negative thinking into positive thinking. Oh, my God, do you know what a Goliath sort of 
gigantic situation that is to go from negative to positive. Do you know how hard that is? Especially when you don't feel good. So instead, do one thing. One thing that you like to do. One thing that's easy. One thing that you enjoy. And then it's going to build on that. So yesterday didn't feel very good in the afternoon. You know, and, and I was like, oh, I'm kind of depressed. I don't feel good. I said, okay, wait. Instead of going down the crazy little rabbit hole of um, what's wrong with me, whose fault is it, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, um, the first thing I want to do is feel better. So I'm going to go drink some water. That's the first thing I'm going to do. The next thing that I'm going to do since I'm drinking some water is I think I'll eat a little, you know, a little cutie, a little orange. Um, and do that next. And then I think, all right, I'm going to get up and I'm going to watch the squirrels bounce around in the snow a little bit, give myself a little bit of that. And uh, then I'm going to listen to something different. I'm going to listen to a little bit of music. After I did those things, uh, and then I had a piece of chocolate, <laughs> I said, oh yeah, that's right. I'm, my body's, you know, being hormonal right now. And so of course I'm not going to feel good and of course I'm going to need some chocolate. And so in sp instead of spending hours trying to figure out why I didn't feel, why I was unhappy, why I was depressed, why I was anxious and, and I didn't feel good, instead of go wasting a lot of energy going down that, that hole and getting stuck there, I said, all right, this is how I feel. What do I want to do about it? What easy, simple, quick thing can I do right now? that will make me start to feel better. Oh, and I also went and took some vitamin D, some vitamin D drops. Good morning, Viviana. So um, you do one little piece at a time. Take the judgmentalism off that you're a bad human being because you, know, you, you aren't perfect. Life has changed. That will free up energy. And then do something um, small, even if it's tiny, that will make you feel a little bit better that will make you, um, that will start to fill your well. You want to do both at the same time, and then you'll sort of spiral up. It's not a, um, it's not flipping of a switch. It's a spiraling up, okay? So catch it fast and do something about it, and don't be judgmental about it. I totally give you permission. Put the, you know, put the towel over the dishes in the dish drainer or just walk past them at all until you've got energy to do them. And, um, Cut yourself some slack. Life has changed a lot since 20, 30 years ago. And we have to hold ourselves to a different level of expectation because we've realized that the priorities of looking perfect and being perfect are not who we want to be anymore. We want to be someone who cares about the people around us, who spends our mental and emotional energy building community and taking care of our health. Because even if we get sick, we're probably going to live a really long time. And if you're going to live to be 100 because of the medical miracles that exist in this world, if you're going to live a really long time, then you don't want to live the last 30, 40 years uh, feeling miserable and feeling awful. Uh, just like if you're going to make it to spring, and you probably will, if you're going to make it through this winter, then you need to make sure you make it through the winter as gracefully as possible. So stock up on the things that you know you're going to need. When you're in a good space, go get them. Um, and keep them in mind that you should take them. And stop judging yourself so harshly for uh, being the complete failure that you probably at times think that you are. So there you go. If you love this, go to InspireMassage.com. Tomorrow we're going to do another thing about surviving winter. Um, and how you can move in a really positive direction. And if you've got some thoughts, ideas, uh, put them in the comments section and we'll integrate them into this week's videos. So I'm Rita Hickman, body mind expert, she has a massage therapist in Northern Illinois, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.